Well, there were two things I had planned on doing this evening, the silly one and the uh, serious one. Since we seem to be in a silly mood, and I planned on doing that first anyway. <laughs> uh, earlier this year, for the first time, I went to a gathering in your Bethlehem called Bardic Madness and uh, got uh, coerced into a couple of different challenges there, one of which they asked me if I would do something that I'd never done before. Well, I don't usually write poetry, and I certainly don't perform poetry, and I rarely do anything that lasts less than 15 minutes. <laughs> but I had this idea floating around in my head, so 20 minutes later, um, I created this poem. Unfortunately, I have not yet memorized it. Fortunately, when I got home, I did manage to uh, transcribe my uh, uh, almost intel unintelligible handwriting, and I brought a copy. Unfortunately, I don't know if I have enough light by which to read it. Oops. For that matter, unfold it. Let me see. Once was a knight who set his sight upon a lady fair. Through her tower window did he spy her in her lair. If only we could meet, said he, I know our love would bloom. But I know not who rules this place, how shall I reach her room? But being bold, he strode up forth unto the castle gate, and pounding it with mailed fist, quoth, "'Tis here I seek my mate." The guardsmen there summoned their king, who came down to the door, and asked the knight in somber tones, "'What do you come here for?' "'I come to seek a wife,' said Jane, "'the one within your tower. I'll wed her now this very day, and take her to my bower." The king scowled down upon the man who stood before him now. With haughty looks he did declare, this I shall not allow. My daughter, she is not for you, you poor and simple man. You need to win her by great deeds, and I don't think you can. Now go away, you silly knight, this door you shall not pass. Then signal to his guardsmen who tossed James out on his ass. Now rose he up, and dusting off, he gazed up in the air said, there's more ways than one, I'll bet, to reach my lady fair. Excuse me. Page turning. <clears throat> See, when I memorize it, I don't have to turn the page, mm. usually. <laughs> ah. He shed his helmet, belt, and sword, and stripped away his mail. Then to the vine-clad wall approached where he began to scale. A third, then halfway up he went towards his desired mate but then discovered that the vines would not support his weight. Hmm. <laughs> again the ground did greet him hard, again he groaned and rose. That didn't work, so I, so I must find a new way, I suppose. He scurried to a nearby farm, and there a ladder borrowed. Now this should work, he told himself, or I'll be greatly sorrowed. Beneath the walls he set its base, and glancing one more time, upon his quarry far above, he now began to climb. Up and up he did approach, she whom had him besotted, but near the top the rungs he grasped he found completely rotted. He flailed about with arms and legs, alas, was no salvation, and once again the ground below gave savage ministration. For some time he lay prostrate while stars cleared from his head, then suddenly he sat erect, aha, he loudly said, I think my mind has come upon an answer to this mystery. And if it works, I shall go down the greatest night in history. Page the third. Good thing. Yes. Then went he off for three days hence, but then came the result, as down the road he slowly came, pushing a catapult. <laughs> you see it coming, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Upon the green he set it down and aiming it with care, he cranked it back and set in place where stones normally shared. He pulled the lever in the arm, now launched him across the space. Alas, the range was set too far, the wall greeted his face. <laughs> when consciousness returned, he vowed, just one more try I need, a few yards closer to the wall, and then I will succeed. Now nearer to the castle wall, again he wound it tight. Again he climbed aboard and pulled and went off on his flight. The view he had spectacular as o'er the walls he soared, then hundred paces more beyond he saw the pine tree hoard. 
Swiftly up to him they rushed as if a great green wall. The first twelve branches that he struck did almost break his fall. Now on the forest floor he lay, lights dancing in his eyes. Hmm. For far beyond, dark castle walls did mockingly still rise. Now bruised and battered, James did know his hope for love was sunk. So shrugging once, he headed home, where he became a monk. <laughs> <laughs> Written this day, AS 58, with apologies to Wiley Coyote. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you